I was a part of a lot of historic records, you know, that kind of started, you know, organically and just grew into something else. And uh, so I have to thank, you know, that's to thank God for that. And then with DJ Quick, you had mentioned too, how, how did you get to meet him and, and work with him? Uh, through some of his people, uh, you know, Greedy Greg and okay. Courtney and Tracy. Uh, and Quick, you know, he would come around, he knew easy. And, uh, you know, and he's from Compton, too. Right. So, back then... Different part of Compton. Yeah, different part. Yeah, <laughs> they, they from different part. But back then, people had more unity. Right. And they didn't care where you're from. Everybody would work together. Right. You know, you know, they would get along for the most part. You know, there wasn't no features if you know... E.T. didn't have no features on his records. Well, as you know, and, as you know Penthouse, Penthouse Players Click was both of them working together, too. Right, exactly. Yeah, so... Shout out to uh, Penthouse Players and, uh, but yeah, you know, working with Quick, I get to work with Second uh, Penthouse Players, and uh, you know, just some AMG. other, other ta AMG, definitely some other talented people, you know. So with DJ Quick also being a musician, especially, like how was the interaction with him in the sense that he's very, like I know Quick, I've been in the studio with mm -hmm. Quick so many times, and like talk to him about life, about music, about just everything from the funk to the Beatles like so it's just mm -hmm. all kinds of stuff with quick what did you notice about him that made you understand how he became successful he's very hands-on you know and he he knows what he want and uh, so and he could play you know mm -hmm. some you know uh, and uh, the thing about it he's quick is like a mixture with Dr. Dre and Eazy-E Mm. Where he raps and he produces his own stuff, right? And he and he mixes too, so he's like a combination. So it was, you know, it's it creative working with him. You know, he give you a space to do what you want to do, but he also knew what he wanted. You know, so um, so it was it was fun. You know, I, I had a lot of fun working with all these people. You know, I, I learned a lot. I learned from each person and producer I work with, right? And you know, I know their formulas and you know. That likes and dislikes, and it's a lot of knowledge that I learned just from working with these people. And then, what was your first production credit then? I would be uh, on oh, my first production credit. Mm -hmm. Wow! Um, I had a uh, production company called Torture Chamber, like right? For for the guys, Cozy, Soup, and Stone, and uh, and Toothy, but. Uh, with the production company we did, uh, on the Predator album, we did produce Wicked, the first single off yep. of Cube's album that was, that made history for a rap album, be number one on both charts, Pop 100 and uh, R&B. Uh, so yeah, we produced and wrote Wicked, uh, MC Renz uh, on the Hound Dogs album, uh, Lighter Shade of Brown, Boss. Um, Born Gangsters. Yeah, 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 uh -huh. yeah, definitely. Uh, and. It, some other groups too, uh, but yeah, that was you know as far as my production, I was with the production group Torture Chamber, right? And uh, that's how you know I did came in with the production wise. But and how do you have to approach musically differently as a guitar or a bassist versus being a producer? Well, being a producer, you know, is you don't really have to know how to play an instrument. It's all about your ear, you know what I mean? Right. So you just have to be the person to put the puzzle together. Okay, I want this part here, I want this, you know, this this, uh, this player to play this, and you sing this, and you put it all together. So you're pretty much a chef, you know what I mean, as, okay. a, as a producer. So that's the difference, other than just playing a part, you have to put all the parts together instead of just maybe one or two parts. Right. And then uh, one of the other things that I think a lot of people don't uh, talk about a lot or don't understand that you did was working on several songs or a handful of songs on 14 Shots to the Dome by LL. Yeah. Um, because we're going to get to some of the other stuff he just mentioned on part two of the interview, but I want to make sure we talk about LL today because that's very different. Yeah, from, it's East Coast, right. It's very different from everybody that we've been talking about, but right. it's also because of Bobcat. Um, yeah, because right. Bobcat uh, if I remember correctly, produced all those, the three songs that you're on, right. uh, 14 Shots to the Dome. Mm -hmm. So with, you got Bobcat you work with, you got all these iconic 
before we get to Bobcat, you got all these iconic uh, producers, teams, crews that you work with, and then Bobcat is, in my opinion, one of the most underrated, underappreciated, exactly. yeah. phenomenal Bobcat, producers yeah. because also another thing not talked about, people always look at America's Most Wanted as the first real East-West collaboration, mm -hmm. but Bobcat had worked with LL on Bigger and Deffer, which is really the first one. Right, right. And, Mama said knock you out, you know. Well, he worked on that. Uh, well, Bigger and Deffer. Oh, is, um, yeah, that's is, a different album. But that's I'm a different saying. album. But, but uh, Bobcat, um, in addition to all the great stuff that he did with Tupac and all this other stuff that Bobcat has done, LL really was phenomenal with Bigger and Deffer. And then mm -hmm. with 14 Shots to the Dome, right. Bobcat worked on that as well, and and you were playing guitar on that. And one of the things, especially as all we have is the beat record, is uh, LL is very political on there, and he's been that way through a lot of his career. But I don't think people look at LL as a political or socially conscious rapper or whatever. Right. But he's had a lot of that throughout his career. So for you working with Bobcat on these records, working with LL, coming off of Mama Said Knock You Out. What was the the feel and atmosphere with all these different things going on? And right. it's different for you too, working with a New York it was, artist. Yeah, we, we flew New York to do that and okay. that was different, you know. Well, break I, it down. What, what, uh... I mean, LL, a, he's a cool cat, you know what I mean? So he's a different personality, you know. He's from the East, so, you know, different mindset, but it was, I'll say he, he was just as professional as the rest of them as far as, what, you know, he know what he's doing and, and get in to do that. Um, I'll say it was another great experience. I, I just, okay. It's hard to put a lot, of, you know, to describe, but it was uh, definitely a, a great thing to go out there with Bobcat and, and kind of, you know, blend the sounds together. And how, when, and why did you and Bobcat get close? Uh, well, I've been knowing Bobcat for a long time, too, because... Like I say, all of them were DJs back in the day. Right. It was Dre. They actually were DJs from Dre and Bobcat and all Battle, Battle Cat. Cats. You know, uh, <clears throat> even DJ Quick. They were actual DJs. So right. they would always DJ pool, you know, and and but you know they always hung around each other sometime, you know. But they all knew each other. So I, I kind of knew a little bit of everybody. Okay. So he just said he was going to do LL's album, and he called me up. That's uh. I want to do LS. I want you to come out here and, and do something with LL because I was working with Bobcat on his other projects, uh, Threat and the uh, right, sick in the but, head. I mean, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, Bobcat has always been uh, been a great friend and uh, I mean, like Pooh and all those guys. Man, it was a uh, it's a great experience. Like I said, everybody has their own formula. Right. You know what I mean? So I'm just blessed to be a part of uh, their formula, working with uh, working with on a lot of different artists. Okay. Yeah, I even played on Coogee Rap. Well, like I yeah, said, this yeah. is part one yeah, part of right hopefully exactly. we'll do a series. And Dane to Dane, you know, <laughs> we ain't got to Dane to Dane yet. We, we well, that's him. a couple years later. Well, man, that's amazing about LL because, you know, I think as people look at rap history, we got to appreciate and acknowledge what people do. And that's why I wanted, I'm honored that you were able to come through. My pleasure, man. For part one. Yes, sir. Uh, with Stan the Guitar Man here on Unique Access and uh, make sure you guys study, listen to all these records that we talked about because as I said at the beginning of the interview, this is just the tip of the iceberg with Stan the Guitar Man. He's got a lot more music and we're gonna delve next time more into his production and then some of the other great artists that he's worked with in the last you know, couple decades. So, Man, it's my pleasure, man. Stan the Guitar Man, thank you for coming through. Man, thank you for having me. Yes, yes. Be sure to check out the history of gangster rap by Soren Baker. He's official. History of Gangster Rap features exclusive interviews with Ice T, Snoop Dogg, MC Ren, the DOC, and dozens of others. The History of Gangster Rap, a definitive look at how Los Angeles changed rap forever. In Los Angeles, the streets definitely set the tone of the hip hop music. I'm 19, I got a $50,000 car. My whole angle always was I'll be street, but I will always tell you the horrors that go along with this life. There will be penalties and casualties for just wearing the wrong color in somebody's neighborhood. And once gangster rap made it from the streets to the TV, the genre exploded. What's that five on your TV basketball? Yo MTV it just catapulted us from being local heroes to national 
gangbang rappers. The history of gangster rap discusses it all from 1980 up till today. There's always gonna be shit happening in the streets. You know what I mean? So it's always gonna be something to talk about. The history of gangster rap in stores now.